Hey guys, what's up? So I'm here in Skopje, Macedonia, and I'm having a great time watching the sunset. This is the castle. It's really, really amazing. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about an epic book that I've just read, and the title is The War of Art, all right? Written by Stephen Pressfield. Many people have recommended this book to me, and you know, I kind of kept procrastinating on it. There are so many books that I want to read, but I gotta tell you one thing. I've read probably a thousand books in my life, and this one is one of the top five books I've ever read. Like literally, I couldn't stop reading. You know, I sat down in the cafeteria and initially I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna read a couple of pages and see what happens and get a taste for it. But I just kept reading and I couldn't stop. And I had other important things to do, but I just, <laughs> I just, you know, ended up delaying everything else just to read that book. It's so beautifully read, written and, and the great thing about it is that Stephen talks about something that pretty much every single content creator has problems with, right? Which is procrastination, which is feeling that resistance to do something that's really important. So if you've ever written anything, whether it was a thesis or, or some essay back at the university or maybe writing a book or a, a, an article or whatever it is, or if you've ever tried to make a video and, and produce some type of content, then you know that very often we have that weird voice in our head saying, you know what, you shouldn't do it now, you should do it later because there is something more important at this very moment. Or we keep rationalizing that we are not ready. And, you know, Stephen talks about it and he calls it the resistance. Now, what I find really fascinating is that he says that whenever you feel resistance to do something, it's probably the most important thing that you should actually do and, and think about it in the context of your own life. I know that it definitely applies to me uh, whenever I face some type of resistance, whenever I rationalize why I shouldn't do something now. You know, later on I connect the dots and I realize that it was probably the most important thing that I was supposed to do. So I had those situations with producing content, you know, shooting videos like this one, for example. I mean, I was just chilling. I didn't plan to make any video and the resistance kicked in, right? And I said to myself, nah, I'm just going to do it tomorrow. It's going to be dark soon anyway. It's kind of cold and uh, I should be going back. But I figured, no, I, I, I'm, I'm making a video about a book that talks about resistance. I should actually fight that resistance and make a video now. So I faced those situations many, many times, especially with writing and uh, and producing any type of content, but also with public speaking. I mean, now I love to speak on a stage, but back in the day, I had a little bit of that strange anxiety because, to be honest with you, I had all of those videos online and people had a perception that I must be a great public speaker. So there's so much pressure on me that I procrastinated and I, you know, I would reject speaking gigs or, you know, offers because in my mind, I thought that what if I don't live up to that perception I have, right? People assume I'm gonna do well. What if I bomb on a stage? So I had that resistance for a long time and then I recognized what was happening and I committed to a bunch of speaking gigs. I did it and, you know, never looked back ever since. I, I, you know, I love it now. I travel all over the world giving speaking gigs. I did one a few days ago in London on a big stage and this is something that really pumps me up and there's still a bit of anxiety before each speaking and going, but the moment I get on a stage, the moment I, you know, grab the mic and say the first sentence, I just feel like at home. I feel epic, you know? So, but there, there was a lot of resistance and I also experienced it with writing. I mean, I, I've been saying that I'm gonna write a book for a while now and I haven't done it. And the, the funny thing is I've written hundreds of thousands of words of content, but I've never actually put that content together into a book because I keep saying to myself, hmm, but. I have so many things that I want to write about. Uh, I gotta, I gotta really think long and hard what's gonna be the the specific topic of my book. But now I realize after reading *The War of Art* that it's just that resistance, right? I'm procrastinating because of that weird perfectionism that is not serving me well. Because I'll keep procrastinating, the time will never be perfect, and I'm not gonna write that book eventually, right? So, um, so that book open my eyes, really open my eyes to what I'm doing right now. And uh, if you haven't grabbed it, then make sure that you check it out. I mean, seriously, it's one of those books I recommend it so much. Like if you read it, you will see so many great benefits. It's just unbelievable, you know, like it's literally my eyes are so much wider now. I, uh, I, I understand 
you know what I'm doing my my own self deception so much better after reading that book. Um, so it's a great read. Uh, what I like is that he actually talks about how to combat the resistance. You know, he's sharing that that story. I don't remember the name of that writer, but someone said one time that they asked the writer, uh, "Do you just wait for the inspiration to write?" And he's like, "Yeah, I always wait for the inspiration, but it happens to come to me uh, nine in the morning every single day." <laughs> so basically, what Stephen is talking about is that instead of waiting for the inspiration, you should create certain systems in your life and you should push yourself to create content, right? Just the way you go to your office and, and you work on your day job, the same way you should be approaching content creation. So we shouldn't simply say to ourselves, you know what, I don't feel good now, I'm gonna do it some other time. But instead, you should say to yourself, listen, this is my new job, I gotta create content. This is what it is, and it doesn't matter how I feel, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna get it done. And the crazy thing is that, yes, you may not be extremely productive, but just the fact that you sit down and push yourself is a win situation because you open yourself to that possibility of creating content. But if you simply make an excuse and you say to yourself, you know what, I can't be bothered, I don't have time, or you make some other weird excuse, then you don't even have 1% of possibility that you will create content because you're not putting in any work. So Stephen talks about putting in, putting in the work every day, turning from amateur into a pro, right? And the difference is that a pro goes to work every day. And um, he also talks about something really interesting, which is, you know, lowering the importance of the outcome. So very often, you know, aspiring content creators, artists, etc., they put so much pressure on the outcome, they want to make it perfect, right? That they never take action. But he says that professionalists, people who are pros in what they do, they lower the importance of the outcome. And thanks to that, they are more likely to actually put in the work, right? Now, if you sit down in front of your laptop and you say to yourself, you know what, I have to write 10 amazing pages, there is so much pressure that you don't even know where to start. You write two sentences, then you go back and you start you know, correcting your mistakes. On the other hand, if you say to yourself, you know what, my only goal for today's session is to sit down and write for two hours. Or my only goal is to sit down and make five videos. But there is no judgment in terms of the results you create, right? You, you don't worry about the quality of the content, you only worry about the work you put in. Now, if you do that, then all that pressure disappears, or it gets lower, it doesn't really disappear, but it gets much smaller. And when the pressure is smaller, that allows you to really open your mind and to push yourself to, to, to actually create much better content. Anyway, I could talk about these books for, for hours and hours because there are so many great strategies there. But instead of doing that, I highly encourage you to get a copy, read it, and let me know what you think. You won't regret it and you're gonna learn so much, seriously.